investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're interested in finding deeply discounted properties before other real estate investors even know they exist and or you're interested in getting funding for your deals, more funding for your deals, regardless of what your broker or banker or mortgage lender or hard money lender would even say, don't go anywhere because you're in the right place. Well, welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if this is your first time on the show, either watching or listening, a very special welcome to you. So what do we do here? We talk all things real estate investing, primarily single family houses, but we also cover commercial. And we also, a number of times, talk about mindset, personal development, and how to, regardless of what kind of business you're in, take your business to the next level by working on uh, personal development. So with that in mind, I've got a very, very special guest on with me today that we're going to talk about mindset and how to increase your business, or if you're going to be starting a business, what your uh, outlook should look like. But before I bring him on, I want to remind everybody the upcoming live event, Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference, is literally days away. And so if you have not registered yet, we're going to put the website right up here right now. And that is www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. I don't know another event like this. In fact, my special guest on today's show is going to be at the live event with me as he normally is. The first day of the live event, we have the rehab bus tour where we actually go out and look at our houses that we've either just started or they're in process or we have finished the rehab. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you how we found these properties before other real estate investors knew about them, how much we paid for them, how we funded them, how much the rehab cost is, what we're selling them for. You're also going to meet on the rehab bus tour, and this is a luxury coach that we take around right here in our area. You're going to meet our team members, our interior designer, the contractors that we do business with, and how you can duplicate the business as well. Day two, I'll be teaching you my foreclosure system, how we can sell any house in three days or less. And then the third day is all about automation. I'll be having about a dozen of my private lenders at the event for you to network with as well. And so I'll be there all three days. Again, get on over to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. So with that, my special guest today, and I've had him on before uh, a number of times uh, on the show, always get great feedback from our audience when we have this guy on. And so he's a dear friend. He's a smart guy. He's a very successful real estate investor, and he's a uh, expert when it comes to mindset and personal development as well. So Chaffee Wynn from Chicago, welcome to the show. Hello, sir. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and I can't wait to be together with you in just a few days at the upcoming live event. You know, I I love your event, Jay, and I'm not just saying <laughs> I've I've been to a ton of different events, and I, I got to tell you, your event in particular, I love just because, one, the general feeling we get of, of unity between the staff members. We always have a good time. We get to hang out. We get to uh, catch up and, and see each other. Only for the students, I think it's so unique what you put together because on the bus tour, they're actually your properties that you've bought, that you're fixing up. And I know a lot of bus tours and other companies out there that do bus tours, they do, you know houses that are just on the MLS that aren't there. So yours, your bus tour, uh, you know, in particular is phenomenal. And then the fact that you bring out your team members and they get to meet your team members and ask questions. I don't know anybody that opens up their business like you do uh, for their students to just duplicate and do what you do. So I, I just love being at your event and I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, like you, Chaffee, I mean, you know, I've been in the business now um, investing in uh, single family houses, doing commercial as well for 15 years. Like you, I've been to a ton of seminars on real estate investing. And, um, and, and, and you, know, you know, when I started uh, training and sharing what uh, we do, my main goal was to be 100% uh, transparent, totally authentic. And only teach what I have already done and proven to myself as well that it works. And uh, I think that's one thing that sets this event apart. 
Yeah, and you know, the feedback that we get is is really, you're so authentic. And, and I think unless you're actually at the event, so, so if you haven't registered yet and you're listening to this, register for the event and get there because you know, it's, it's hard to talk about the actual feeling you get. And I tell you, time and time again, the students come up to me and just say, you know, Jay, what you see is what you get with him. And he's so authentic. And that's what really attracts me to him. I and mean, that's why students love working with you. So uh, definitely, yeah, again, if you're listening to this, get to that boot camp. You'll, you'll see for yourself the feeling, the difference that, um, you know, that Jay will give you versus anybody else. So. Yeah. And the networking is phenomenal. I mean, we got movers and shakers that come from all over the nation. I mean, West Coast, East Coast and everywhere in between. So, you know, there's a lot of experience. And so, you know, whether you're a newbie, you've not you've not done your first real estate investing deal yet or you've done a ton of deals, there's going to be a great value for you. So uh, thank you for those words, Chaffee. And um, yeah, we're going to have a blast. And awesome. it's, it's just always a great event. So what I want us to talk about today, Chappie, is you've written a course, uh, and you've also taught this course uh, in person, and it's tied, and of course, I've gone through it. It's a phenomenal course. It's on business, but it's all aspects of business, and uh, so I want to give our audience uh, a lot of free sample, if you will, uh, on today's show. So you titled this course Business Bionics. So what's your objective um, and goal for, for an individual after they have learned this you know, body of material that you have put together? Well, as, as the title says, Business Bionics, and you know, I come from an era where the $6 million man and the bionic woman were <laughs> huge hits on TV. And when I was thinking about business, and all the people I've worked with as a business, you know, they always want to get that extra leg up. They always want to really jumpstart their business. And I, I was thinking, hey, if we can have bionics and infuse that into your business so that your business is stronger, it's faster, it's better, and, and it moves better and it creates more money for you, that's the perfect integration of everything. And so I put together this course with that thought in mind is how can we help your business grow? How can we help your business become stronger, better? And fundamentally, how can we help you grow and you become that business and that bionic person to help your business grow and be there as well? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, in looking through your course, what I love and what I want us to talk about some uh, on this show are some of your just key uh, element or key principles that you sort of lay the foundation, you know, uh, before actually, you know, jumping into, you know, um, you know, some of the steps that you go over. So, you know, one of the first things that you talk about, and by the way, uh, I would say, and do you agree, this information we're talking about or that you've put together is it's excellent for a current business owner, and it's also excellent for someone that's considering starting their own business, right? Well, absolutely. I, I put it in mind of if you're brand new and you've never been exposed to business, this is how you should structure your business. And if you're already in business and you've been operating for a few years, this is how you optimize your business. And so it's with both mindsets in, in place, this is how you really want to function and run your business. Yeah. So one of the first principles that you talk about in Business Bionics is commitment. I mean, you know, you asked the question, really, how devoted are you? And so, I mean, that's like one of the first things you talk about. Why? Why is that first? And, you know, what are your thoughts on commitment? And and what advice can you give to someone for them to even discover, well, really, how committed are they? Yeah, and, and this topic, I think, you know, commitment has changed uh, in the sense of back in the day, commitment really meant, you know, you were fully committed, you were engaged, this is it for you. You know, what you what you said, what you did, that's that's exactly, you know, your word, your integrity, and you meant it. As a matter of fact, if we look at statistically speaking, since I am an engineer and I do, you know, crunch numbers sometimes. Statistically speaking, you know, the divorce rate in the country right now is about 50% or more 
uh, it fluctuates between, you know, 40 to, to 60 percent. And, you know, divorce, when you think about it, one of the largest commitments in our life is marriage. You know, when we make our vows to marry somebody, it's forever. It's, you know, until death do us part, right? And yet over half the people that get married end up getting divorced. Why is that? I mean, that's like, if you're making a big commitment and that's a huge commitment for your life, why are you breaking up after a year or two or sometimes even less? And so for me, commitment really is my word. It's my integrity. And it really is a a, a thought process, not mo- not just a thought process, it's, it, it's the core of who you are or who you should be. And so when you make a commitment, and I understand small commitments are just as important as big commitments. And so when you tell somebody you're going to call them back, or when you tell somebody you're going to send an email, or you're going to do something little, that's a commitment. And a lot of people forget about that. A lot of people think, hey, you know, I can just say this over here and, and then not really follow up, or, you know, I'll, uh, I'll call you later, and then they don't really call you back, or I'll do this. And so, again, small commitments lead to bigger commitments, and they're just as important. And so when we're talking commitment, you really got to understand the mindset of a committed person. And, Jay, if, you, if I can uh, go into a little story I got, um, I love the story, and I think it exemplifies what commitment means. Please do. And so there's, there's a story about a, a woman who had just attended a piano concert, and uh, she had seen this person. His name is Johann Sebastian Bach. And as you might know, he is a, because Jay, I know you play the piano. <laughs> yeah. You're familiar with this individual. And she had just saw him in concert, and she was just blown away by how beautiful the music was and how talented he was. And she was a raving fan and, and really excited. For, and, and she got a chance to go backstage and actually talk to him. And she went up to him and said, you know, I would give my life to play like you play. And, you know, his his reaction was really quite blunt. His reaction was, ma'am, that's exactly what I did. (laughs) So he committed his life to play at that level. And, you know, here she's just making a flippant comment about, you know, how I would give my life, how I would do anything to play that way. And she hasn't, right? She hasn't put forth that commitment. She hasn't put forth that time and that effort. And that's all he did his entire life was play the piano. And that's why he was so good. And if you want to get good at something in your business, if you want to get, you know, your life to that next level, you have to make that commitment to really focus, to really put in the time, to put in the practice, to put in the effort to really get there and stick with that commitment through thick and thin and really devote yourself to it like Johann Sebastian Bach did with the piano. Yeah. So you said something a moment ago that reminded me, uh, you said small commitments are just as important as big commitments. And, you know, there's two different ways I'm thinking about commitment right now. And that is my commits, my commitments that I make to other people. And then what are the commitments that I make to myself? So um, it reminds me of what T. Harv Eker was known for saying and, and probably of many others. And that is how you do anything is how you do everything. Absolutely. That's actually one of my favorite quotes as well. And it's so true, too. I mean, how you perform in your daily life and the, the little commitments you make, the little promises you make, they translate to those big commitments later on down the road. And so when I'm working with somebody and I meet with somebody and I network with them and they tell me that they're going to do certain things and then they don't, then that's a warning sign for me not to do a big deal with them that might cost me thousands and thousands of dollars down the road. Yeah. Now, if they do exactly what they say they're going to do and they follow up and they make that commitment going forward, then that's another good sign for me to say, hey, this person is really a person of integrity. It's a person of commitment, a person who really does what they say they're going to do. And that's somebody I want to work with. Yeah. Well, you know, like, for example, one way that we know on first impression, if someone is a person of integrity, uh, and that is like, for example, um, I was, uh, I said, I was referred to um, a potential 
person to do business with last week. We had never met before. We set a telephone conference call at a certain time on a certain day. This was all done by email. And, you know, one of my first, you know, what do you call it? Litmus test or whatever it is, is when I've got that very first conference call with somebody, are they there? And not only are they there, are they there on time, you know? Or is it whatever it is, five or 10 or 15 minutes late? Um, and so as, we're, as you're talking about commitment, and so what you're saying, Chaffee, is it's foundationally critical for someone to be committed, like I'm all the way in on making this work, can someone really be totally committed unless they know why they are getting into this business? And I mean, can someone really be totally committed until they think about, and maybe you think they can, we'll see what you say. Can they be totally committed to a venture until they know what's at, um, what they stand to lose if they don't stick with it? Yes or no? <laughs> That's a tough question, and in my opinion, Jay. <laughs> you know, I just thought I just you know I just I just thought of the story, and I can't remember how it goes, and I'll let you answer the question. But there's some story that you may recall about. Oh, this was long ago. There was some kind of shipwreck, and uh, I forgot what the guy did that displayed his his. Um, his example of, of, of commitment. Of course, there's always burning the bridges. You know, you can't go back, right? <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I'll let you answer the question. You're talking about back in, uh, I think, the 1400s, the, uh, the Spanish con conquestors or con con conquistadors. I think it's the conquistadors. Conquistadors. <laughs> and uh, they had a choice. Uh, they were outnumbered, vastly outnumbered by the locals. And they had a choice of either getting out back on their ships and going back home or burning the ships and fighting everything through. That's what it was. And so they ended up burning the ships, not giving themselves a, a, a plan B, shall we say, and right. fully committing to either moving forward and succeeding or dying. Right? <laughs> so, exactly. Exactly. So, yes. so back it, to the question. And, and, and so your question is, can you be fully committed? Absolutely. Now, uh, at the same time, you again, for me, when I make a commitment, that's my word, that's my integrity. And I think it, you know, fundamentally, business is about integrity. Business is about commitment. And if your business, if you are an individual that meets your commitments and fulfills your commitments, and you're a person of integrity, that shows in your business as well. And so people will want to do business with you in that sense. So when you do make a commitment, you can be and you should be fully committed. Now, the, the real answer to your question is, is that be careful of what you commit to, right? And so I'm very careful if I'm going to say something and commit to something that I can meet those commitments. And if I'm not sure if I can meet those commitments, then I might say, you know, I need to think about that or let me get back to you. And so people, again, flippantly just say, sure, I'll do that or I'll do this or, you know, I'll, I'll show up or I'll, you know, make this happen without fully thinking things through. And it's so important to make sure that you are positive that you will be able to make that commitment or you'll move heaven and earth to make that commitment because you are fully committed. Yeah. So, you know, what I would recommend to our audience is, you know, whether they're in business for themselves or they're considering to go into business or they're not, even they're not considering going into business. I think most of our audience is, you know, if you're not keeping your commitments, you know, you aren't. Right. And Absolutely. if you want to make a shift in your level of success and attaining goals and, and whatever it is that you're going for, just start keeping your commitments no matter what. That's going to affect everything in your life. I mean, you tell you tell your significant other or your spouse or your child, I'm going to spend time with you and we're going to do such and such on such and such a night at Friday night. We're going to have date night or. You tell your child, yeah, we're going to go to the park and we're going to play on Saturday. And then you come along and you say, I'm sorry, honey, but blah, 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 blah. All, all they hear is you never, you don't keep your word. That's all. That's all. They, that's all they hear. The blah, blah, blah part. That's it. Just blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. 
<laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so that's one of your foundational principles you start with uh, in business bionics. And then the second one that you talk about is uh, I love the story you tell that's what's called that I think Napoleon Hill gets credit for it. And that is three feet away from gold. I love the story. So, so tell her about the story about three feet away from gold and what's the lesson learned. So again, this is a story in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich book. And it tells the story about Darby, Mr. Darby and his uncle. And Mr. Darby and his uncle actually found a, uh, a vein of gold in Colorado back in the 1940s. And this is actually based off a true story. So, you know, you can look this up. And so they found this vein of gold. And, and so they went back home and raised a bunch of money, bought a bunch of equipment and said, hey, we're going to strike it rich. We're going to go and mine all this gold and, you know, become super wealthy. And what happened was that they went and they spent all this money and they went to where he found the gold and they started digging. Then initially they found some more gold and then it just dried up. And, and so all the gold dried up and they're like, oh no, what do we do now? And they're like, well, let's just push a little bit further. So they pushed a little bit further and they kept going. And then all of a sudden again, nothing, right? And so after a while, they're like, you know what? There's nothing here. Let's just cut our losses and move on. And so that's what they did. They, they took all their equipment and everything that, the, that they had in terms of the rights to the mine and everything, and they sold it to an individual. And what happened was that this individual really came along and said, you know what, I'm going to actually hire an expert and have him map out the ley lines of the area and see if he can find some gold. And so he hired an engineer to map out the mine. And what they discovered was that Mr. Darby and his uncle were only three feet from a huge vein of gold that turned out to be one of the largest gold mines in the country at the time. And so that engineer who bought the equipment for, or not the engineer, the gentleman who bought the equipment for pennies on the dollar ended up making millions of dollars because he didn't give up. He actually hired the expert, got everything through. And the big lesson there was that Mr. Darby actually learned, heard about it and heard about what happened. And he made a commitment <laughs> to himself to never give up too soon like he did just three feet from the gold. And the follow-up story for that is that he ended up building the largest insurance company in the country because he would never take no for an answer and he kept going for the gold when he was selling his insurance policies over and over again. So well, you know, a, persistence is, is critical and making that commitment to stick with it through thin and thin and really following through with your commitments is key. Yeah. I had a guest on uh, on the show here not long ago, and in thinking about persistence and and not giving up, I remember we had the we had the conversation. Well, we talked about the book, and the book I know you and I've talked about the book Go for No. Um, mm-hmm. But another thing we talked about on the show was there had been some study by somebody I don't remember who it was that was putting the top common characteristics or whatever on the most successful. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, the top common personality traits of billionaires. That's what it was. And one of those top common traits among the billionaires is resilience. Resilience. So whether you're a billionaire or you're broke, we've all got one thing in common, and that is we're going to have surprises come up that we didn't expect. I mean, I don't care if you like Donald Trump or you don't. I mean, the man is resilient. <laughs> right. So, you know, so we all no matter if we're in business for I mean, it doesn't matter what size business we're in. We all have the unexpected challenges, whether they're small or whether they're large like getting cut off and having no funding and wondering what you're going to do, right? Um, so what? So the commonality is it's what the ultra-successful do and how they respond to when these challenges come along. And, of course, you're talking about part of resilience is uh, persistence. Absolutely. 
one of uh, a great quote that exemplifies this is from Dale Carnegie. It says that um, most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seems to be no hope at all. <laughs> and what you'll find when you interview ultra successful individuals is that they've made huge commitments and huge sacrifices to stick with their dream, to be persistent with what they want. Uh, there's, there's a guy out there, his name is uh, Robert Kiyosaki. You might've heard of him. He wrote a little book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, the book you don't know is that you know, before he made it as a huge success, he and his wife had to live in his car. They were homeless for a couple of weeks because they were so committed to promoting their game, the cash flow game and their book that, you know, they were, were struggling to get it sold until that book came out and became a huge smashing success. Uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, the uh, Steve Jobs both started out of Bill Gates, all started from the garages, right? And so these individuals, they all made it they all made these huge commitments and they committed to succeeding regardless of the odds, regardless of the situation, and they stuck with it. And that's why they're so successful. Yeah. In your business bionics, you also reference uh, a quote from a professor in the Harry Potter movie, don't you? <laughs> All these lines. I do. <laughs> it says, uh, it's our choices, Harry, that show what we are truly far more than our abilities. So again, it's the choices you make far more than how good you are or how talented you are. It's making those choices and sticking with them and really making that commitment to move forward. Excellent, excellent. Um, I tell you, uh, Chaffee, there's, uh, there's two more key principles I wanted to cover on this uh, show, but we actually only have time for one more principle. <laughs> we'll come back. So your next principle in your business beyond uh, bionics is get over the money issue. I'd like to come back to that principle on another show, but I'd like to wrap up this show with what I think is, I don't know if it's the most important, but it sure ranks right up there. And of course you agree with me. I agree with you because you've got it as part of the foundational part of success. And that is in everything you do, you recommend and you teach people to come from a place of giving, coming from a place of giving, um, ha having a, you know, having a servant's heart, et cetera. And, um, you know, I know you and I have talked about the book, The Go-Giver, The Go-Giver. And by the way, folks, if you don't have the book, The Go-Giver, it's a thin book. It's actually more of a parable. Uh, it's a wonderful story about coming from that place of giving. But Chaffee, in your opinion um, and your experience, why is that so important? Um, what does that do to someone's outlook? I mean, why have you got that a foundational or including that as a foundational part of even before you get started? Well, one of my favorite quotes is by the late and great Zig Ziglar. And his quote was, the more you help other people get what they want, the more you're going to get what you want. Right. And, and I think that sums everything up is that the more that you help other people achieve greatness, achieve whatever it is that they desire, achieve what they want, the more that's going to come back to you. And I'm a big believer of energy flow. And so you have to give in order to receive. I also believe you have to receive in order to give. And so there's a there's a give and take there. And when you come from a place of giving, it, you know, nothing else really matters. Uh, you know, one of one of the concepts which is in the course is about selling. And so many people think that selling is such a bad thing. I don't want to get into it now. Only, you know, when you come from a place of giving, selling is just helping people achieve something that they want, right? You're giving them something that they desire, that they need, that's going to help them in their life. And in return, you're getting paid for that, right? And so in, in the sense of coming from a place of giving, you know, you're, when, when, when you're always coming from that place and there's no, there's no conflict of what's in it for me, it's always, how can I help? How can I provide service? That then opens up the door for you to help anybody and do anything. It opens up your limitations and prevents you from, you know, stopping yourself because you're, you feel like you shouldn't be doing something, right? You, instead of feeling like there's a conflict in you and, and that you're doing something you shouldn't be, 
when you come from a place of I'm helping this person and I'm helping this person achieve something that's going to benefit them in their life and benefit the people in their lives, then nothing else really matters because now you're just helping. Now you're just going out there and doing what you know you should be doing because the more you help people, the more it's going to come back to you and the more it's going to spread out to everybody else as well. You know, as you were talking, I mean, th what you're talking about, a perfect example of that is how I have raised and attracted millions and millions of dollars in private money. Um, and just to make sure our audience is on the same page as, as we are, uh, if you're new to the show, that's one thing I'm known for is being able to attract a lot of funding. And I've I've taught thousands of students now across the nation on how to get funding for their deals by using private money. And again, private money is nothing more than doing business with an individual, just like you, just like us. And um, they loan money from their investment capital or their retirement funds, and we do business together. So when I first started, uh, just, to, just to flesh out what you just said, Chappie, just to come from a place of, of helping and serving, when I first started um, raising private money, um, my whole mindset was what I could do for the people that I knew and had some kind of relationship with and make a difference in their life. And so when I come along and offer the types of interest rates that I do to someone to do business with me, uh, you know, the only complaint that I've heard from our private lenders, and we've got 48 of them right now, our only complaint I've heard is they'll say, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? <laughs> so you know, a, a common a common comment um, or conversation that I hear from new students who are just starting out in real estate investing or they're just starting out on, um, on, on raising private capital, um, they have this fear thing, all right? of, well, I'm not going to be able to get the money, or they're going to say no, or, you know, what if I screw up, or what if I say something wrong? Well, here's the thing, here's the thing, you really can't screw up, or fail, or etc. if your mindset, as you just said, Chaffee, if your outlook is to serve the other person. Now, let me turn, let me turn that coin upside down. So if I'm coming into a meeting with a potential private lender or I'm, or I'm inviting a potential private lender to talk with me about my program and how it works, if my focus is on me and what I'm going to get out of this, and that's not, now I'm not saying I shouldn't be thankful and grateful, and of course, my program, the way it works, when I offer the private lending, Obviously, I'm going to get something out of it. I'm going to get funding and I'm going to be able to do more deals and all this. But if that's what my thought process is, and that that's what my focus is during a invitation to talk with someone or I'm having a meeting with somebody, then the other person, first of all, is going to clearly know it. They're, they're going to feel at least where you're coming from. But no matter if it's private money, real estate, it, it doesn't matter. If my conversation is totally focused on what I can do for that other person, it's like you said in Ziegler, Zig Ziglar's quote, I'm not going to have to worry about me. Um, that makes sense, Chaffee? The, the yeah, example? absolutely, Jay. And what you said is 100% correct, is that when you're, when you're focused on yourself and you're talking about what you can get out of it, the other person's going to feel that. They're going to pick up on that. And then, and then their back of their head, they're going, What's this person trying to sell me, right? What's this person trying to, this person's trying to take advantage of me in some way. And when you, you know, like, when you get those thoughts out of your head and say, how can I provide value to this person? How can I help them? And I know that by offering them this private money, instead of earning half a percent, they can earn 8% or, you know, how many times their money, that's a huge value to them that's going to help them down the road. And I focus on that and the energy of helping them that comes across of, wow, this person's really looking to help me out. This person's really looking after me. And of course you have to fulfill that on the back end by finding a deal and working the deal and making sure that their money is protected and everything. 
And that comes across as well, because again, you're doing everything you can within your power to help them get a higher return on their money. And that comes across to them. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I want to add one more thing too, Jay, yeah, sure. you know, turn this back on real estate. One of the questions that I get a, a, a ton from new investors, from people just you know coming into the real investing world is, why would somebody sell me their house at 50 cents on the dollar? Or why would somebody want to give me their house? And, and so they don't understand that. And they, they feel of, again, they're thinking about what they're getting and they feel like they're taking advantage of somebody. And in reality, when somebody is motivated and they have this burden of this house and this mortgage and they want to get rid of it, not only are they going to give you their house at 50 cents on the dollar or less, they're going to thank you for taking it off their hands for you. And so again, that mindset of here I am when I'm talking with sellers, instead of looking for the best deal that I can get and the most amount of money that I can make, I'm focusing on helping them out of their situation. Then you're, you're going to get sellers coming to you saying, Hey, can you help me? Can you take this property off my hands? Can you, you know, work with me to help me get rid of this mortgage that's, that's been on my shoulders and they're going to thank you for it. Right. And so again, when you get those emotions of, of coming from a place of giving, coming from a servant's heart first and removing everything else, everything else falls into place. Absolutely. And you know, with what you just said, I just had this thought occur to me and that is unless they are 100% a believer in it. And when I say a believer, I'm talking about believing that the product or service that you're going to offer you are doing the world a disservice by not offering your product or service. I mean, you know, I, I think in, in the past, I have gotten involved in some business opportunities. And the only reason I got involved in it, and this, was, this has been some years ago. Thank goodness I learned my lessons about this. But the only reason I got involved in the business opportunity was to make money. Now, let's stop and think about that for a second. If the only reason, I mean, based on based on the framing of what we just talked about, okay, and that is from coming from a place of serving first. If the only reason I'm getting involved in an opportunity or an endeavor is to make money, then where's my focus, right? My focus is all on me. Now, don't get me wrong. The purpose of business is to make money, period. That's the purpose of a business. But the purpose of my business and my purpose are two different things. The purpose of my real estate investing business is to make money. My purpose is to go out and serve uh, uh, give a ton of value. And when that happens, guess what? My business fulfills its purpose. But like you said at the beginning of this part of the conversation is, is, uh, is, is what you got to do first, what you got to do first. And so if, if someone's not successful in real estate investing or successful in raising private money uh, or anything, um, there's this level of belief in what I'm actually providing uh, to, to the market is really, really that valuable. Jay, let me just follow up with an example that people might relate to, whether you're in real estate or not. And that's the story of Zappos. You might have heard the story of Zappos is that, you know, they focused on customer service. Uh, they're a shoe company and they were selling shoes and they would a customer would call in and complain about something and they're like, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And they sent them out a new pair of shoes. It didn't really matter. And so that was their focus was helping the customer, making sure that the customer had a good customer experience. And they grew a shoe company from a little old company to a billion dollar company that got bought out by Amazon and all through just the customer service, focusing on the customer and providing value to the customer. So there's a great book out there by the, the founder of Zappos. I believe it's called Happiness. Yeah. It talks about that story. And definitely that's exactly what we're talking about. That's a real life example, uh, not just a fable or something like that. A real life example of a company really focusing on giving, really focusing on helping. 
Uh, another shoe company that is very similar to that too is Tom's Shoes. And Tom's Shoes, for every shoe they sold, they donated a pair of shoes to a third world country. And they're also a huge company, multi-million dollar company, based again on that same fact of giving and helping. And when you do that with your real estate business and you focus on helping buyers and sellers, you know, find properties, fix properties, and sell properties to the right people so that they can have a forever home for themselves, all that comes together and that's how you grow your business and that's how you make money as well. Yeah, and what you just said reminds me of what you've heard me say before, Chaffee, and that is on, on most of the deals we do, uh, there's four different people that win and we want everybody to win in a transaction. There's always at least three, but sometimes we have four. And who are those winners? Well, on a real estate transaction, uh, the first winner is if we're buying that house, then the seller won. I don't care if it's in the multiple listing service or if it's off market and for sale by owner. We help. And in fact, that's what we are. We're helping people solve problems. If people didn't have a problems, then, then what's a service for? I mean, they got a problem. They either want to be better or they want to be quicker or they want to save money or they want to make money or whatever. But back to the four wins, the seller of a property. Um, if we use private money to fund the deal, then the private lender won big time by getting high rates of return safely and securely. If we sell that home, either on rent to own, well, that's someone that couldn't buy any other way. We sell it in MLS. We help solve their problem. They were looking for a new home. And then, of course, the fourth person to win is us because we orchestrated the entire transaction. And also, there's a bunch of ancillary people that benefit, too, from the attorneys, the contractors, everybody that you're paying to make the deal happen. They all win as well because that's their business and they're growing their business as well. Exactly. Well, Chaffee, just to recap before we uh, sign off from this show, uh, congratulations on getting your business bionics launched and having that available out there. But uh, what we've talked about today is commitment and the importance of it. Uh, you're three, we are three feet away from gold many times. So resilience and persistence and um, then wrapping up with uh, having a servant's heart. Well, Chavi, parting comments before I see you at the upcoming mastermind meeting and live event. The parting comments is that, you know, when you attend the boot camp and you, whoever's listening to this, go and learn all the strategies from you, Jay. And then you combine that with the mindset that we also incorporate in your boot camp as well. That's when true growth happens. That's when you start working on your mind, the, the as you say, the real estate between the ears, right? And incorporate that and integrate that into everything that you teach at the boot camp. That's how true success happens. And that's really what we want to share with everybody that attends is not only how to, you know, make money and, and grow a business really improve yourself and everyone around you as well. And that's what I know that you're going to get when you attend the boot camp. Yeah. And you know, um, when you just said that Chaffee, that reminded me one thing that I believe and you chime in one thing I believe that is so different about this particular real estate investing event is we do incorporate. Well, first of all, it's from, it's from A to Z. I mean, we cover how to find the deals before other real estate investors know about them. Uh, we talk about how to get them funded in multiple ways, not just using private money, but using other ways as well. Uh, how to get them sold fast. Uh, rehabbing, if someone's interested in rehabbing, we got that covered. And then automating the business, using virtual assistants and such. But also, we have the personal development mindset piece as well. And, you know, at a lot of the events, uh, you do sometimes two or three, depending on our agenda, sessions on personal development. So we we cover we cover the whole spectrum, and that's that's really important. And I'm just so glad you're going to be at the upcoming live event as well, Chappie. Awesome, man. And and I love that piece about your event as well, Jay. Is that you know not only do I get to go up there and share some of the some nuggets with uh, individuals, we also have another coach coming that has a wealth of experience and personal development as well coming. And so we have a whole team of people coming really to help the students, again, not just learn the nuts and bolts of real estate, really help them through some of their challenges and roadblocks so that they can really implement the things that you teach. 
Exactly. All right. Well, thank you, Chaffee. And again, everybody, we'll put it right up here before we sign off. www.jconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. So thanks to all of y'all for uh, tuning in and either watching or listening here on the show. Look forward to having you uh, attend at another upcoming show and look forward to seeing you at the upcoming live event. I'm Jay Connor of the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best and here's to taking your business to the next level. Bye for now.